Thank you for joining me for Cold Counter. In this episode, I'll be teaching you how to stop feeding Yasuo in my ranked games. Before we go any further though, I do want to apologize. My voice sounds a little funny. Um, I'm sick right now, so I it may not sound my best, but we're going to get through this anyways. Now before we can figure out how to cold counter a champion after they've already been picked in game, we need to first identify what makes them difficult to play against. Now Yasuo derives his power from three primary categories. First, his ability to choose when to fight be it to disengage or re-engage a target. Secondly, his damage. And thirdly, his sustained DPS. When you are first deciding how to beat him, you need to either A, compensate for and negate one if not more of these categories, or B, have a champion that is better than him in one of these three categories and capitalize on your strength there. So we'll break down each of these three categories and figure out how to beat him in each of these categories, be it through items or play style. And then we'll give you some tips and tricks at the end just to deal with him here and there, to help cover anything I may have missed. So, his ability to choose when to fight. He draws this power from three of his abilities. Firstly, his Q. The knockup allows him to disengage from a fight rather easily. Secondly, his E, his dash, which allows him to dash to minions very quickly in succession over and over again. And then lastly, his Wind Wall, which is probably one of the best disengaged tools in the game. Now you may be familiar with one of Riot's favorite things to do when balancing and creating champions, which is conditional power. Understanding this is quintessential to understanding how to fight Yasuo, because Yasuo is made out of nothing but conditional power. Remember, he needs to stack his Q off of minions to get that third Q for the knockup, and he needs to use his dash on minions to navigate a fight. That being said, one of his greatest conditions of power is minions. So if you are going to fight Yasuo, do your best to ensure it's never on his terms. Because when it's on his terms, it's not a fair fight. Everything is in his favor, or he's not going to fight you. And if he does fight you and things aren't in his favor, that's perfect for you. You can beat him. Try to wait for him to use his tornado before fighting him. That way you've got the max amount of time possible to fight him before he's going to get to his tornado. Lock him down and force a fight on him as quickly as possible and burst him down before he can deal any significant damage. Just focus him and finish him off. You need to force him to fight when he doesn't want to so he doesn't have the power to kill you. Now unfortunately his ability to choose when to fight can't be countered very well by items, but it can be countered by picking the right champion. Let's talk about his damage. His greatest damage power spike comes at two items when he's got Static Shiv or Phantom Dancer and his Infinity Edge. This means that prior to that two item power spike, you want to force as many fights with him as possible to push him behind. Now once he has those items, it's still not that big of a deal. Buy Zhonya's and buy Mercurial Scimitar. Now you may be saying elsewhere, why am I buying Mercurial Scimitar? Well you may not know this, but Yasuo's ultimate can be QSS'd out of, which means that you can deny him all that damage, which is quite a bit. Now it's not going to work for every champion buying that QSS, but any AD champion and any tank champion, it's not a bad item on. Now when it comes to a sustained damage, buy a Randuin's Omen. Randuin's Omen ruins Yasuo's day. Before he has any anti-tank items or lifesteal, Randuid's Omen is a huge problem for him. It turns you into what is this nearly an immovable wall. Now let's talk early laning. When you're laning against Yasuo, you never want to push the wave. Remember Yasuo can farm exceptionally well under tower. You want to freeze the lane, or if you can, force the lane to push towards you. And make the Yasuo choose between getting farm and getting ganked. Now it goes without saying that point and click abilities that are reliable against Yasuo completely destroy him on so many levels. But if you're trying to cold counter Yasuo and you're already in game, you may not have this available. So check to see what his summoner spells are. If he's taken ignite or teleport, you're okay. Just focus on farming and play safely and ping for ganks when you can. If he's got exhaust, be careful. If it's a good Yasuo, he might be able to 2v1 you under which circumstances you want to make sure you bait out the exhaust or the wind wall before the jungler comes in to gank. 
Oh, and on the topic of his wind wall, uh, something worth noting here is it's on a 26 second cooldown. You can use this to your advantage by baiting it out before your jungler ganks or baiting it out before going all in on him, forcing the Yasuo to fight without his most powerful tool. Now if things go badly, you may have to honor the flash rule. And what that means is staying a minimum of flash distance away from Yasuo at all times and your minions at all times. This way Yasuo won't be able to get on top of you without sacrificing his flash. So when it comes to team fighting and you're trying to cold counter Yasuo, firstly you'll need to think about the team fight from his perspective. Remember that he's not looking at you alone, he's not looking at the AD carry alone. He's looking at the grander scheme of the team fight and figuring out how he can kill everyone, not just you or your AD carry. You need to think about your positioning, making sure that your entire team isn't lined up for that sweet sweet 4 man to 5 man knockup. You need to make sure that your AD carry isn't isolated, otherwise Yasuo can get on top of him and with his wind wall, ensure a kill. In conjunction with that, remember that Yasuo doesn't even need to fight the ADC, he can put up his wind wall in the middle of the fight to isolate the ADC and keep him from having any effect on the fight. Now just before we wrap this up, I want to go into a bit of detail on the last point which I started to expound on a little bit, about how Yasuo is paying more attention to the grander scheme of things. There are three team fighting win conditions for Yasuo. First, kill the ADC, which is self-explanatory. A second is isolate the ADC, and third is that sweet sweet 4 to 5 man knockup. I wanted to show you two examples of this happening to give you an idea of what the Yasuo is thinking and why he's doing what he's doing to set up for these win conditions. So the first example we'll have is isolating the ADC. Got a fight here starting at the Baron, and if you look closely, uh, you'll notice that I am relatively behind. 8 and 13, I really wasn't doing well, this was one of my ranked games, it was a tough one. Uh, but I see the Lee Sin go diving into the enemy team and knock up the enemy Ari. Now looking at the enemy team's team composition, they have one heavy magic dealer, Ari. Now for those of you who know the Yasuo and Ari matchup, you know that it favors Ari because of her unique ability to kite. The other magic dealer on the enemy team is Zillion, but Zillion is very skill shot reliant with his bombs, so I can easily dodge those. They aren't going to be as big of a deal as an Ari would to a Yasuo. Now this is relevant because I have a Ma of Memordius, but I have no major defensives against the ADC, with the exception of my Wind Wall. Now with that in mind, I alt the enemy Ari. I do this for two reasons. Firstly, to engage in on the fight, and secondly, to get myself close enough to the tanks that I can actually use my wind wall on the enemy ADC. Knowing Misfortune, she's going to panic the moment I alt in, and she's going to alt. When she does that, I use my wind wall. You can see that right here. Now while the Misfortune is alting into my wind wall, contributing absolutely nothing to the team fight, I'm busy shredding the front line with the armor penetration I get from my ultimate. By the time the wind wall finally expires, Misfortune has contributed nothing to the team fight, almost everyone is dead, and there's nothing left to do but clean up. Now if you were watching closely, you'd notice that I got all the way down to 217 health. The only thing that was keeping me alive was a combination of my Warlord's Bloodlust and the Maw of Malmordius. If Misfortune hadn't panicked and ulted immediately, but instead auto-attacked me, I would have died. If I put up my wind wall to block her, all she would have to do is flash around the wind wall, or even walk closer to the Baron Pit, and then alt, I would have died instantly. This is in no way a fight we should have won, but because Misfortune panicked, they lost. This gives you an idea of what Ayaso is doing and what he's thinking when his intention is to isolate the enemy ADC. And Misfortune is the perfect example of an ADC you want to do this to, against non-mobile ADCs. Alright, this team fight here is an example of that sweet sweet 4 man knockup to finish the fight. I approach the fight and as I'm headed towards the Baron Pit, I notice a few important things. First is that our Talon is a madman. He dives into the enemy team engaging in fight when he most certainly should not have, and does indeed manage to kill the ADC. However, that's not the important part. The important part is that he's managed to bait out Skarner's ultimate, which is the enemy team's best counter to me, given that it's a reliable point-and-click CC with no travel time and it cannot be blocked by my wind wall. With that in mind, I begin kiting the fight and forcing the enemy to come in on me. I intentionally separate myself from my own team to encourage the enemy team to come on to me. You'll see here the Twisted Fate stun card coming right at me, and I dash through the Zed to buy myself just a little more time, and immediately, just as the stun card's about to land on me, I throw my wind wall, blocking that stun. Now, had I either A, not had that wind wall, or B, not been fast enough to activate that, I would have died immediately. You see all four of the enemy team is right on top of me, they would have bursted me down before my team could follow up and I would have died. But because I managed to block it, 
I can turn on the enemy team, get the four man knock up, alt, and they are all dead. We were behind by 10 kills, behind in gold value. But because the enemy team didn't respect the damage Yasuo is capable of putting out, we managed to turn the fight. So these are just two examples of a Yasuo winning a team fight in one of the three win conditions he has when team fighting. Uh, so do keep these in mind when you're fighting with a Yasuo on the enemy team. In summary, play your lane carefully, buy the right items, burst the Yasuo down at the beginning of the fight, and don't let him get that sweet four-man knockup. Ultimately, when it comes to learning about how to take down a champion, it's best to learn how to play them. Nothing that I can tell you here can be more valuable than your own personal experience playing and understanding how the champion thinks and what they'll do in a fight. Thank you for watching. Not subscribed? Fix that. Red button beneath the video. It came to my attention that Yasuo could be getting some pretty heavy nerfs and or changes in the near future. So my Yasuo guide is on hiatus until I know what those changes are so that my guide will be as accurate as possible. In the meantime though, expect a weekly cold count. Thank you.